So, earlier this week, Donald Trump was indicted in a New York City courtroom. He was indicted on more than 30 counts emerging from hush money payments he made to Stormy Daniels right before the 2016 presidential campaign to keep her quiet about an alleged affair he had with the adult movie star. Now, it's the first time in U.S. history that a former American president has been criminally indicted. And ever since New York DA Alvin Bragg announced that a grand jury had handed down these indictments, there's been an absolute media frenzy. I mean, would there be violence in the streets? Would there be a mugshot? Would this help or hurt the former president's 2024 presidential campaign? And ultimately, could the former president spend time in prison? Now, political pundits and journalists and social media influencers and criminal justice experts, I mean, pretty much everyone has weighed in on this. As a negotiation expert, though, I'm particularly intrigued by this question, which is, would Trump negotiate a plea deal? Now, remember, Donald Trump considers himself the king of deal makers. This is a man who is the author of a best-selling book called Trump, The Art of the Deal. And as we all know, Donald Trump has boasted repeatedly that he could quickly negotiate deals to some of the world's most intractable problems. Problems like the Russian invasion of Ukraine, problems like the Israeli-Palestinian crisis, problems like North Korea's nuclear arsenal. I think I'm very well prepared. I don't think I have to prepare very much. It's about uh, attitude. So negotiating a plea deal for himself could in many respects seal Trump's reputation in the eyes of many as the greatest negotiator of all time. And yet, no sooner did these indictments get announced on Thursday that the very next day, his lawyer on the Today Show said that there was, quote, a zero chance that Trump would negotiate a plea deal. Be combative on, on something that he believes is an injustice. Today, I'm going to unpack why Trump has decided not to negotiate a plea deal. And along the way, I'm going to offer you some tips for when you might decide not to negotiate, whether it's a plea deal or something else. I'm Bob Bourdon. I'm a senior fellow at Harvard Law School. I'm the founder and former director of Harvard Law School's Negotiation and Mediation Clinical Program. And I'm the founder and principal of the Cambridge Negotiation Institute. Let's go. Okay, so let me start by just describing what a plea bargain is in the first place. It's basically a negotiation that occurs in the criminal context, whereby someone accused of a crime agrees to waive their constitutional right to a trial, and instead they'll plead guilty in exchange typically for leniency from the prosecutor in some way. It might be a lower penalty recommendation or lesser charges. Now, sometimes a plea bargain is made in exchange for a defendant's testimony against someone else in another case. It's critical under constitutional law that a plea only happen when the defendant has actually committed the crime and not just to avoid prison time. It's also required that when someone takes a plea, that they actually plead guilty before a judge and that they actually waive their constitutional rights. Now, there is a lot to be said for plea bargaining in the American system, and frankly, there's a lot of really downsides about it. And those are things that I'm going to cover in a future video. For now, I want to look specifically at Trump's decision not to negotiate a plea deal. Now, some have said, and I think this is completely wrong, that he's not going to negotiate a plea deal because he's a fighter, or because he never negotiates pleas, or because he never settles. But that is so easy to debunk. Remember this, the entire basis of this criminal indictment stems from a payment made by the Trump organization to Stormy Daniels to keep her quiet. That is a negotiated deal. So it is in fact a settlement. Moreover, less than six months ago, New York Attorney General Letitia James actually rejected a plea negotiation request from the Trump organization in a case that alleged that the Trump organization had deliberately overvalued his assets in order to get loans and tax breaks. In fact, because Attorney General James rejected the negotiation offer from the Trump organization, the case went to trial and ultimately Trump's organization was found guilty on all counts of criminal tax fraud. It's also the case that senior Trump officials like Financial Lieutenant Alan Weisselberg recently negotiated a plea deal himself. 
So the notion that somehow Trump doesn't negotiate plea deals or doesn't settle is not a reason why he's not negotiating a deal here. So let me propose four reasons that might drive why the former president has decided that he is not going to negotiate a plea deal here. And the first is a really important and basic one that applies to all negotiations. And it really relates to an interest assessment. That is, whenever you go to negotiate, whether it's a plea deal or something else, you always need to make a decision of, are my interests better met by moving forward with the negotiation, or will they be better met by avoiding that negotiation? In other words, is my alternative away from the negotiation table, something called our BATNA, our best alternative to a negotiated agreement? And is that going to be better if I go and take my BATNA or if I reach a deal at the table? And I think as Trump thought about his interest here, it's pretty clear that moving forward with the trial is better for him. Consider some of the following. First of all, his entire brand is to look strong, to stand firm. And so negotiating something here where he admits a liability would actually make him look weak. Second, by continuing this fight, he gets an enormous ability to fundraise for his 2024 campaign. And in fact, one of the things that we know is that at least with his Republican base, the indictment, at least in the short term, has actually helped his campaign. And in fact, within hours of the indictment being announced last week, Trump launched a number of emails and he quickly raised more than $4 million for his campaign. In addition, other surrogates have also made arguments saying, please send Trump money. This includes people like South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. In addition, if you look at his other possible 2024 competitors for the Republican nomination, by deciding to fight, Trump has kind of forced their hand. They either have to get behind him or cross his base. And in fact, all of them have gotten behind him. And so in pretty much all respects, at least in the short term, Trump's interests are advanced by fighting, not by negotiating a plea deal. So let me give you a second reason, though, why people sometimes will decide to go to court instead of negotiate a plea. And that really relates to deeply held principles and beliefs. And so I think a second possible reason why former President Trump has decided not to negotiate a plea deal is that he actually believes he's innocent of the charges. Now, we know, unfortunately, that many, many people who believe they're innocent actually take a plea deal. And they take a plea deal to get a leaner sentence or to maybe not get a sentence at all or just get a fine. But in fact, you should not be pleading guilty in good conscience if you really do not believe you did something wrong. To the degree that's true, it actually connects to another recent case involving movie star Gwyneth Paltrow. As some of you remember last week, there was a high profile trial and in the end, Gwyneth Paltrow won this trial, meaning that she won exactly $1 from a retired dentist who was alleging that she had purposely hit him on ski trail. Now, it turns out that Paltrow could have settled this case for a $300,000 payment. And it is pretty clear that she spent way more than $300,000 on lawyers. After the jury found in her favor, she was asked, why did she go to trial rather than just pay the $300,000? And she said, that acquiescing to a false claim would have compromised her integrity. And so it may well be the case that Trump feels the same here. Now, let me give you a third reason why people sometimes don't negotiate a plea deal, and in fact, why in this case, perhaps President Trump is not negotiating a plea. And that really is not so much around personal pride or not so much around one's personal interests, but rather they want to vindicate a right or make some kind of systemic adjustment. Here the concern around a settlement or a plea bargain is that it might make one's individual problem go away, but the systemic issue is still there. So to the degree former President Trump believes that there are political witch hunts happening in our country, settling might actually egg that on more. Fighting here for him is fighting the good front. Let's consider Two totally different examples, but examples where settlement would have been bad. If you consider Brown versus Board of Education, right, that integrated public schools in this country, or more recently, the Obergefell case that allowed for marriage equality in these countries. If each of these cases might have been settled out of court, an individual group of children might have been able to go to school, an individual couple might have been able to get married, but what we wouldn't have had 
is racial integration of public schools in America or marriage equality for LGBTQ people. And so at times, someone decides to avoid a settlement because they're trying to vindicate a broader right. A last reason why someone might decide to avoid a plea bargain and instead go to trial really relates to personal risk assessment. So in considering whether to negotiate a plea, one always needs to consider one's own personal risk profile. Depending on one's own risk profile, one might prefer to pay some kind of fine and admit guilt rather than take the risk of prison time. In the case of Trump, he may well have assessed that even if he goes to trial, and even if he loses a trial, it's unlikely that he'll spend much of any actual time in prison. And so in that sense, and particularly if he is more risk-seeking than risk-averse, he might just say, going to trial is a bet worth taking. I might get totally vindicated. I think I will get totally vindicated. If I don't get totally vindicated, it's not going to be so bad for me. So to recap, there are a number of reasons why former President Trump, despite his reputation and despite his self-image as a great negotiator, may have already decided to eschew a plea bargain negotiation and simply go to trial. These are also reasons that many may consider in deciding whether to enter into plea bargain negotiations. First, how does a negotiated resolution or plea deal compare to going to trial for your own interests? In other words, is the BATNA for trial better for you than a negotiated deal? Second, is there a personal principle or value that you are trying to vindicate, specifically in the criminal context, your own innocence, such that you're willing to take that risk and make that point? Third, are you interested in using the trial as a way to make a more systemic change, to vindicate some kind of bargaining endowment or right? For example, are you trying to create a new precedent? And lastly, what is your own personal risk assessment and risk profile? If you are more risk-seeking, you may be more inclined to go to trial than negotiate a deal. Now, if you're interested in learning more about when to negotiate and when to walk away, watch this next video, which is when should you not negotiate at all. And of course, if you're interested in learning about how current events relate to topics like negotiation and mediation and conflict resolution, then don't leave here without subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and ringing the bell so you don't miss any new content. I'm Bob Bordone, and thanks for watching. Okay, you know when you want to keep on watching, click, click, click.